We will now move, um, item 5 on the order paper is the adjournment. The proposer of the topic will have 15 minutes and all other speakers will have approximately 6 minutes. I call Tom Buchanan. Thank you, Madam Principal Deputy Speaker. And I do know that there is something very important on this evening. And we're holding some folk here, but um, it is an important issue that we're raising today with regard to broadband provision in West Tyrone. And I want to take a, a slightly different angle to it today than what we normally would have uh, within the chamber, because I want to first of all look at the positives that there are within a broadband cover in West Tyrone, and then move on to the more negative areas. And in this digital age, one of the key fundamental components of our economy and our everyday lives is excellent broadband cover. Establishing a reliable high-speed broadband infrastructure has been a priority of this government over the past years, and previous data departments have made considerable progress in this matter. And as we start this new term in Stormont again, once one of the main priorities must be on continuing to improve that broadband infrastructure right across Northern Ireland. One of the cornerstones of the previous executive has consistently been placed on working with the private sector to develop and implement a strategy that will ensure Northern Ireland has a world-class telecommunications infrastructure in terms of broadband capacity, access and cost. Previous deputy departments with my colleagues Arling Foster and later Jonathan Bell at the helm has had a strategic vision for Northern Ireland to be, leading broad, to be a leading broadband region in the UK and for Northern Ireland to have 100% broadband coverage and access for homes and businesses right across the country. This important infrastructure development is a work in progress and while it is a priority of the government that continues to be the backbone of economic development of our region. As an MLA of a predominantly rural constituency of West Tyrone, West Tyrone is an area of two extremes with regard to broadband. On the one hand, OMA was chosen as a backup hub for Project Kelvin, which is a 29.5 million euro collaborative initiative which connects Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland with North America. Outside Belfast, OMA is host to the hub, which would potentially take over if anything went wrong with the main hub here in Belfast. And I think it's important to note that uh, within this House today. Mr. Or Madam, uh, Speaker, potentially we are at the cusp of a digital wave which has the potential to attract global companies to the west of Northern Ireland through the Kelvin Project Hub. Since Oma Enterprise Centre has tapped into the Hiberian uh, Atlantic US Europe cable connections, which is part of this cross border initiative, they are going through the process of attracting world class industry to West Tyrone. At this location, OMA has one of the fastest broadband connections in the UK, enabling it to compete with the likes of the New York Stock Exchange or the London Stock Exchange. This broadband infrastructure project linking Northern Ireland to North America has unexpectedly provided a unique connectivity opportunity for businesses in the local area to tap into. Indeed, since OMA Enterprise Centre has seen the sense since then, OMA Enterprise Centre has seen the potential of this opportunity. They have been working with Invest NI to attract major players in the digital field to the west of Northern Ireland. Thanks to Project Kelvin, we have a unique opportunity in OMA through this hub, which means that we have a base in the constituency where potentially world-class digital companies could set up their bases as a broadband connection is second to none. It is refreshing to see that companies have the vision and foresight to tap into the excellent resources in the heart of my constituency. Currently, we have 65 companies in the, in the OMA enterprise with over 300 jobs, and there is a the potential to increase, uh, to increase that to over 100 companies with over 500 jobs. And at this juncture, I would like to invite the minister at some stage to come down to see exactly the work that is ongoing there at the um, business centre in OMA and the potential that there is. Because not only do we need to um, 
uh, highlight the, the discrepancies and the failures that there is in broadband throughout West Tyrone and the rural areas, but I think we also need to highlight what we have and sell what we have and seek to get uh, the, 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 the Minister to look at what we have and the potential that there is to expand here within West Tyrone. This is a clear example of how the establishment of broadband infrastructure across Northern Ireland has presented opportunities for uh, places like OMA. The choice of OMA as a backup hope for Hiberian Atlantic Broadband Company has provided a unique opportunity for the constituency. OMA Enterprise Company has tapped into the unique opportunity which has seen their vision towards reality where they are now working hard to attract investment into the area in a digital capacity. Such vision is precisely what West Tyrone needs and ensures that the west of the province has a chance to compete on a global scale. The opportunities at stake here are not to be underestimated and we could potentially see OMA as a digital hub for huge global enterprises in the future. Yet despite the amazing opportunities which are in OMA town itself at the Enterprise Centre, all we have to do is drive a few short miles, a few, uh, a few short mile trip out into the country, and there we find there are many pockets of the constituencies where households have extremely poor, if any, broadband cover at all. According to Ofcon, uh, Fermanagh and Oma District Council areas has the lowest broadband speeds of anywhere in Northern Ireland. Added to the slowest speeds in Northern Ireland, this area is predominantly rural. And this is uh, confounded by patchy availability to broadband cover. There is huge gaps between rural and urban broadband accessibility. Ofcon noted that the average download speeds are almost twice as high in urban areas as rural areas due to premises being that much further away from their nearest fibre uh, cabinet. This disparity in broadband cover is frustrating. And while successive departments have invested in and, and changing this and, and, and seeking to change this, the broadband cover for the rural areas in Northern Ireland remains consistently at 40% of premises with uh, access to super fast broadband. And this is a challenge that we face, and this is a challenge we have to seek to address. Most households and businesses in West Tyrone are immediately at a disadvantage simply due to their location. And it is unfortunate that despite the significant investment, investment into broadband infrastructure, that there still continues, this still continues to be the case. Other options need to be found to counteract these pockets of unavailability of slow and practically nil broadband cover. More needs to be done to encourage huge companies such as BT to invest in cabinets in rural areas to develop their coverage straight to the homes for those who are too far from the fibre enabled cabinets. In addition, rural areas have the greatest number of lines which are currently incapable of supporting speeds of above 10 megabytes. In 2015, 2% 2 of urban areas in Northern Ireland did not have access to superfast broadband and 42% of premises in rural constituencies had no chance of accessing superfast fibre optic broadband. So there is a disparity even uh, between the urban and the rural areas. Uh, this blight of poor provision uh, has a devastating impact on companies and is a debilitating factor in businesses who are trying to compete on a global market. But I have to say that even within such poor infrastructure in some areas, manufacturing and industry continues to do fairly well within West Tyrone. Precision engineering is a niche market in West Tyrone uh, and is thriving and growing. This is one example of where skills and attitude of businesses and manufacturing industry can adapt and be world leaders despite the difficulties across the manufacturing sector and within the broadband infrastructure within the rural areas. And while I, I am aware that the department uh, does have other alternatives such as satellite broadband and, uh, and other areas, uh, again, uh, and, and in a lot of areas, this isn't suitable uh, because of cost or, or other issues. It simply isn't suitable for the people, uh, some of the people within uh, those areas.
Business in the rural areas are affected, uh, disrupted and hindered. School children and students are at a disadvantage when they want to do their homework online or study online. Farm businesses are suffering and hindered due to poor quality online access. Work between departments such as the Department of the Economy and the Agriculture, Environment and Rural Affairs must be coordinated and collaborated to ensure that rural areas are no longer the poor relation to the urban areas. Our constituents should not expect poor broadband coverage simply because of the location. It is simply uh, unacceptable in this digital age that we live in. Access to high quality mobile and internet services is vital to our increasing online social and economic lives here in Northern Ireland. And while much good work has been done and continues to be done, much more still needs to be done to close the gap between the urban and rural areas and householders and businesses in West Tyrone continuing to be subject to the slowest broadband speeds anywhere in Northern Ireland. And I think, uh, for the Minister, one of the most frustrating things in West Tyrone is where we have constituents and they're living on one side of the road and they have quite a, a broadband cover. They're not doing too bad with the cover that they have. And yet and all, somebody living on the other side of the road can't access broadband at all. And again, you have somebody, and they're living fairly close to one of the fibre optic boxes, but because it's in a different postcode area or whatever, they can't access that either. And I have, uh, and the minister will know where I've put through quite a number of, of um, uh, issues to the department regarding uh, constituents, whether it be farmers, or, or homeowners or small businesses and they're struggling with this broadband cover. And I, I uh, fully appreciate today that uh, this is an issue, it's a real challenging issue for this, uh, this assembly, it's a real challenging issue for the department. And uh, Again, it's something I do believe that we need to look at and look at in some innovative ways to see how we can address these gaps that exist within the rural areas and within West Tyrone. But I think it's also important today that coming from West Tyrone, that we highlight what we have within West Tyrone and the benefit that that is and how that can continue to grow and attract businesses within West Tyrone and create that balance rather than just coming and presenting a negative image to the Assembly today about the difficulties we have. And we do have huge difficulties, but we also have those things as well that where we have the ability outside of Belfast to provide uh, uh, companies with the highest speed of broadband that uh, they can expect to have right across Northern Ireland. So um, I thank the uh, members for being here for the debate today and uh, I present the uh, adjournment to the Assembly. Here, Sir Declan McAleer. I call Declan McAleer. Uh, Gurmagut, uh, Kian uh, First of all, I want to take the opportunity to commend and thanks, thank uh, uh, Thomas McCann for taking this very important issue here to the House today. It's great to see the Minister here to listen to it. Uh, I suppose the, the motion here today follows on from another very important debate that uh, Barry McElduff tabled last week to do with rural roads. Indeed, Ross is a debate uh, on German table next week in relation to learning disabilities. So the uh, West Rowan is fairly having a say in the last few weeks now before uh, the, 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 the recess, and it's great to see the voice of West Rowan being heard very loud and clear here in the Assembly. Um, I just want to pick up on some of the points that Tom said. Um, the, Broadband is an essential co commodity, and all of us who be out and about uh, in the constituency, West Rowan is a two-thirds rural constituency. Some of the most isolated areas of the north, indeed Ireland, is in West Rowan. You go up into the Sparrows, it's extremely isolated. And the people in those areas feel very disconnected. Uh, the broadband coverage uh, isn't very good at all, and that's compounded by uh, poor public transport, and um, indeed their roads could do with an injection as well. So people can feel quite disconnected uh, and isolated. Um, the broadband covers all aspects of life. It's, it's, like a, it's, a, it's a commodity. It's absolutely sorry, it's not a commodity. It's something that's absolutely essential for life now. Families need it for children need it for homework. Businesses need it, and indeed. Uh, in relation to the farming community, and uh, Tom will know from being on the, the DARD committee with myself in recent times that uh, one of the, the two, the, perhaps the main thing to uh, get the faster payment of single farm payments is for farmers to fill in their applications online. 
That is a key ingredient for the speeding up of single farm, single par farm payments. And by not having good quality broadband in certain rural areas, that's undermined and actually undermined the departments and the ministers' attempts to get faster payment of single farm payments. And we will be hoping for earlier payments in a year-on-year -year basis to help farmers cope with the crisis, the financial crisis they find themselves in. As such, I welcome the fact that that the, the commitment to improve broadband connectivity is one of the programme for government indi indicators. So that's, that's, a good, that's good news and that's good that commitment is there. And it's important that people uh, make their views known. I think the consultation period ends on the 22nd of July. So I know people out there will feel that broadband is a massive issue in their communities, and I think stakeholders and individuals should be having their say in the PSG consultation process in the time ahead, make their views known. I welcome uh, earlier on comments made by the Minister that the, the USO, the the executive here wants a USO threshold to be raised from 10 to 30 megabits, and that's a really, really good uh, commitment from this, uh, this executive. Drawn on the debate earlier, there's a couple of things that jumped out at me. Um, I note and obviously welcome the fact that there has been progress made in recent years, and it is, uh, I suppose it is a fact that 95% uh, is, is coverage, there's coverage across the north. But one of the big figures that jumped out at me was that 64 million has been spent in the past eight years on um, trying to improve um, connectivity in, in, throughout the north. And that's 64 million pounds of, of public people money, money going to essentially um, what is largely private operators to try and Know, fill these nut spots that we experience right across the area. And whilst we have good progress in recent years, um, it's still not good enough. And if you take West Tyrone along with many, and we heard all of our consistencies mentioned here earlier as well, there are very, very large nut spots in uh, uh, rural constituencies right across the north. And I think it's really, really important to draw on that 60 million figure and put a focus on the private sector who have been granted these millions of taxpayers' monies to see exactly what they have been doing to try and um, you know, provide that connectivity to, to rural areas, because it's a huge, huge issue. During the course of preparing for this debate, I came across um, some, uh, uh, just a, a review of a report from Scotland that was comments made by the Connectivity Secretary, Fergus Ewing. Um, they indicated that they've been doing a lot of work in relation to mobile infrastructure in Scotland. They've been putting 4G and preparing for 5G, and they've been working very, very closely with the, the private sectors on a number of um, initiatives to expand the 4G and indeed prepare for 5G. And I think you know the fact that they were dealing with the same mobile operators as we would be here. And the fact, even though it's a West administration, Scotland, the Scottish Government has taken forward it as their own initiative, I think it would be worthwhile to explore, in conjunction with, uh, with the, the Connectivity Secretary, some of the initiatives they've been at. And they've been looking at things like business rates relief for operators and investing in the construction of new and enhanced infrastructure. So those, those, it might be an idea to perhaps look at some maybe good or best experience in other similar uh, parts of the world where we maybe we could draw on for here. But I think, uh, you know, again, just to conclude, this has been a very worthwhile uh, a German debate this evening, to put a focus on West Tyrone. Uh, when we were out and about, particularly over the election time, we hit us as a massive, massive issue. And I think it's important, it's great to see a minister here, and I'd be encouraging him to work with his active colleagues and look at other areas and other countries to see what practice, what lessons we, we can learn in other parts of the world to bring here to try and improve uh, the connectivity we lack in many rural areas in West Tyrone and throughout the north. Graham Agut. Call Ross Hussey. Thank you, uh, Madam Principal Deputy Speaker. And can I begin again by thanking Mr Buchanan for bringing this issue before the House this evening? And can I thank the Minister for being here? I look forward to his visit to West Tyrone uh, to see what is available. And it seems strange that uh, in the county town of Tyrone, we do have the Project Kelvin. We do have one of the most advanced uh, internet services that are available in the world. We can get in touch with North America. Yet from OMA, you can't get in touch with North Tyrone. West Tyrone, South Tyrone, or East Tyrone, we have a major difficulty. Reference was made to the rurality of uh, West Tyrone. And in fact, in Greencastle, we had businesses who could not transmit their paperwork through to their suppliers, who could not pay their staff because the internet had gone off. And we talk about the rurality and we talk about the isolation. And yet in Malin, in County Donegal, which is not the centre of the universe, for those of you that don't know it. It's on the most northerly tip of what is the Republic of Ireland, and it's more north than maybe we are sitting at this moment in time. 
you can get full broadband facilities in Malin, yet you can't get it three or four miles outside the county town of Tyrone. Now, talk here has been mentioned here this evening to people doing their homework. And I look across this chamber and I think there's very few of you who would have used the internet to do your homework, with the exception perhaps of you, Mr. McCrossan. But I look across at the oldies over there and I know uh, they, like I, were glad to have uh, a biro and a piece of paper. But when I did my uh, degree with the Open University, I had to send off my assignments on the internet. And it was marvellous to hear that Doctor Who sound as your computer whirred into action and the TARDIS was about to land, and you hope it landed in time, so you were able to get your assignment away to the Open University in time to not miss the deadline. And many a time, by one or two minutes, I managed to make it and get the assignment away. But there are people in Tyrone who would love to hear that sound of the TARDIS arriving in their home, because at least then they would have some sort of internet connection. They don't have it. Doctor Who had a blue box. We talk about the green boxes that are scattered throughout Tyrone. And we know that some of them have that many wires coming out of them, they might as well be the TARDIS, because it's impossible for all the systems to work from those boxes. But there are also suggestions that there are green boxes scattered throughout West Tyrone that are not connected because it does not make financial sense for BT. They are waiting for more and more customers to become available, and then it may be connected to this famous box. And why is this? BT boasts at one stage they have, what was it, 99 per cent of the United Kingdom were covered with broadband. And I know there are some people in this house that don't like to recognize the fact that this is part of the United Kingdom. And BT used to say, it's good to talk. It's good to talk until you want to try and talk to them and BT would not engage with me in relation to our constituents who on the Edenderry Road in Oma, less than three miles from the town centre, who are on the Beira Telephone Exchange, cannot get access to the internet. But strangely enough, when questions appeared to the minister, BT wanted to talk. BT phoned me, but BT were not willing to come to Oma. BT wanted to meet me here in Stormont. So now I have discovered what the problem is. BT does not know where BT 78 and BT 79 actually is because they have never travelled outside the greater element of Belfast. They do not know where Tyrone is. They do not know where Oma is. And it's scandalous in the 21st century that somewhere like Malin, in the back of Donegal, can get full strength broadband. And three miles outside Oma, you cannot get broadband. But in a lot of our rural areas, you might as well have a tin can and a piece of string, because that is the most effective form of communication. I listened earlier to the debate when we were talking about broadband. We are talking about the, the provision. We in West Tyrone have been very badly serviced by this. And Mr Buchanan is correct. In Oma, we have great provision, we have great facilities, and it works, and we have a great working population. And that is wonderful in the town. But we cannot forget the rural dwellers. Mr McElduff is famed throughout the world for using the expression rural proofing. Well, we need to have broadband rural proof. 4G, 3G, in some parts of Northern Ireland, they'll be glad to get AG, anything at all, because they're not getting it. So why is West Tyrone being forgotten about? I know as part of the programme for government, this is going to be dealt with. Can we have an assurance that by the end of this mandate, that everyone in West Tyrone will have access to broadband in West Tyrone, whether it be 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, we want access. So I thank Mr Buchanan for bringing this to the House this evening. I am glad that the TARDIS has now landed. Let us hear her taken off again and let us hear broadband being available in West Tyrone. Thank you, Madam Principal Deputy Speaker. Here Sir Daniel McCrossan. I call Daniel McCrossan. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Principal Deputy Speaker. And I too welcome uh, this all-important debate uh, uh, to this House and thank 
my constituency colleague, uh, Mr. Tom Buchanan, for uh, bringing it uh, uh, here, and also for the Minister uh, and for his attention on this all-important issue. Uh, this is something we've just come out of an election. It's, it's a problem that we've picked up on absolutely every single rural door, and, and Ross is right. Barry has heard it. I have heard it. And every MLA practically before us in our respective constituency uh, has heard it as well. This is not a new problem. And Tom, uh, just in relation to a point that you made, this is not about being negative. This is real life, and this is real life for the people of West Tyrone, particularly those in the more rural parts of our constituency. And it is great that we have Project Kelvin and OMA and everything that it could potentially uh, deliver for the area. But that in itself is not enough. That is only one area. West Tyrone is a hugely rural constituency, and the people feel very neglected. Now, I could ramble about figures and the costs and the money that's been spent elsewhere, but I'm going to talk about the real life aspect of this particular situation. I'm going to talk about the people that are trying to run businesses in our constituency, a constituency that has been rife with unemployment and social deprivation and a lack of investment for a long number of years. This isn't a new problem, but it's something that could help address the very real difficulties that we have in relation to the local economy. Businesses, and, and, and Ross is right, businesses that can't get their staff paid, there's a major flaw right there and should not be happening in 2016. Businesses that can't get their orders out on time, which has a knock-on effect for the reputation of that business and also uh, for the person that's purchasing the materials. It's limiting our capacity as a constituency to truly expand economically. People won't invest in a constituency that can't meet the needs, the basic needs, in relation to broadband. And broadband in 2016 is a vital, a vital strand of any infrastructure. And that needs to be appreciated by this House. To hear things like uh, a particular area doesn't meet the needs or doesn't meet the costs is utterly ridiculous. This is there's 18 constituencies in Northern Ireland, and each and every person from one end of those to the other has a right to access that service. That's only one area. School children, as Ross has rightly pointed out, and some in this House may have used a biro and a pen, but we have come much further than that in relation to homework at least, but certainly not in relation to broadband. We need to get real about these issues. There are students out there and it's feeding into the migration issues that we face in Northern Ireland, and immigration issues, in fact. But in particular, the migration. Students don't want to come home from Belfast because they have no access to the internet, because they can't communicate with their friends, the most basic thing. And as Mr Buchanan rightly pointed out, on one side of the road you may have broadband, on the other side of the road the person doesn't. That's hugely frustrating for people. And to a large extent, and I don't like using this language, it's discriminatory. I want to know what the department is going to do on a meaningful basis to actually deal with this issue. And there is no justification, and the minister is listening, there is no justification for the lack of investment or the lack of funding or the lack of delivery around this particular issue in my constituency. It is an issue not only in relation to uh, uh, broadband, but also uh, telephone coverage. And I'll give an example whilst I was canvassing, a very real insight. I needed to get access to a phone, and I said to someone with me, can I borrow your mobile? And they said, uh, we have no network, Daniel. So I went to the next house, and I had a conversation, and I asked the lady, can I use your landline? And she said, I'm sorry, she said, um, there was a lightning strike, uh, and we haven't had a BT landline for a few weeks. We've made contact with BT. They've ignored us, and ignored us, and ignored us. She said, we have no internet and we have no uh, mobile signal. Complete and utter isolation, and that is an example of the reality. We have much to talk about of benefit, yes, in central Oma and the central parts of Straban, but when you go to the farther roads, people are utterly, completely isolated, neglected and ignored. And those that are benefiting are talking about the slow speeds, and some say that is satisfactory because they're getting some broadband. It is a neglect of a rural community, of all rural constituencies, and it must be addressed, Minister, and it must be addressed in this mandate. This cannot go beyond. We are not, we are not going to suffer any more excuses. Thank you. I call Michaela Boyle.
Margaret, uh, um, this is Madam Principal Deputy Speaker. Can I also thank Mr. Buchanan for bringing this very important um, adjournment debate to the House today and um, to support him on that. Um, first of all, I do want to commend the work that has been done thus far. Obviously, it's not enough for us in West Tyrone. Um, I believe, as others said, we can and should be doing more. Um, I, I just want to talk, and others have talked about examples of, about how it affects um, people's lives, not having good not having any broadband, never mind good broadband access. Um, uh, I, I know a home that has three modems and the one house, one in the living room, one in the kitchen, and one upstairs in the bedroom, just to get some sort of coverage in the area. And this is a family that has school-going children that, that depend on uh, broadband access for, for school. I, I also am aware of a young uh, teacher who lives in Plumbridge, She's a teacher in Straban and she drives home to Plumbridge every day after school, has her tea, and then drives seven miles to her brother's house to get broadband access because she has no access to broadband in her home, even though it's set up for that very reason. So that's just some of the issues that, that uh, we are hearing on a daily basis. We have areas like Glenelly and the Hybrac. Um, other members would know where these areas are, where people actually drive in their cars leave their homes to drive in the car to get access to broadband and access to a phone. That should not be happening in, in this day and age. There is also, and I, I said it here before, and I've heard others saying it, there's no incentive to build small rural business in rural, rural areas because of the lack of broadband uh, and phone access. And that again is, in my opinion, discriminating as well, also like the previous member had said. Uh, we need to have specific concentration of high priority areas uh, to allow a fit for purpose mobile uh, or, uh, broadband infrastructure. Um, it was talked about also, uh, Declan McAleer mentioned and others, the private sector providers. They have a responsibility. They have got public money to provide a service for coverage in rural areas. And service users that uh, belong to the private uh, sector. Um, they're, they're experiencing very degrees of outage, and this is not acceptable. And in terms of elected representatives, when we contact them, there's an inconsistent approach to responding to elected represent, rent, representatives, and that's not acceptable either. I will indeed. Well, the member me in relation, in the exact context of which you're speaking, Douglas Bridge, uh, in our, our, our own Straban district, as an example of that, where there was a cutout. And when I had contact, or my office had contact, I'm sure your office is the same, uh, uh, had contact, we were asked for the phone numbers of absolutely every person in that respective area that's affected directly and wouldn't address us otherwise. Unacceptable. And the member will have an extra minute. Yeah. Can I thank the member for his intervention? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I've experienced that in my own offices, as others have. And, and, and indeed, the consequence of this has an impact on one's ability to go about their, their daily business and their work. Um, support must be given to those affected and, and indeed a proper line of communication um, must exist from the provider to the user because that's not happening. And as Mr McCrossan said, you know, if they're not going to get back to us, they're not going to get back to the service user either. I want, to, I want to pay tribute to the services that our libraries provide, and I know in my own hometown of Straban, um, I know many um, children from the rural areas, when their parents pick them up off the school bus, drive into Straban to, to use the facilities uh, of the internet services that, that our libraries provide. So I want to commend them for, for, for doing that. Um, that. Many of our libraries kind of have like after school clubs, and, and, that, and that's, that helps. But I'm also aware of families travelling uh, as well. Um, going back a, a, a number of years, Claire McGill, who's my predecessor MLA in, in, in the House, um, raised this issue in terms of small post offices in rural areas. Um, and, and, and not much has changed, and that's over five years ago. And, and as I say, uh, you know, there's no reliable broadband service uh, in parts of Ahibrak, Ahiarn, Glenelly, Kalita, and Killen. Um, so we do a lot of talking in this House about having high quality workforce indeed within the public and private sector, but, but how, are we going to, how are we going to allow for that when our young people can't stay at home and study, or as a uh, previous member said, won't come home from university at the weekend because of um, bad access to broadband? Uh, I was in DFP um, in the last mandate, and we talked a lot about flexible working patterns. 
Well, that does not. Flexible working patterns do not work for people living in the rural areas, even though you know, that DFP said that they have provided for that in terms of rural proofing. Um, I am aware too that two young, two young friends uh, in a con uh, living in the rural area of, of a Hybrac, uh, in the morning um, when one family picks up the other family to get to the school bus, they, they live less than a, a, f a few feet apart, a field, a field apart. The family has to come out and sound the horn of the car to let the other family know they are on their way to pick up the child, because in the house or outside the house, they have no, no, way, no other ways of communicating, because they don't, their phone, their landline does not work, and their internet services is very, very poor. I have today with me two young students um, from my hometown of Straban with me, uh, Ellie and Marisa, and they spoke about their school friends coming into school um, and not being able you know, literally in tears, not being able to complete their coursework or concluding their coursework. You know, and that's that's a sad reflection of our society in terms of what we are meant to be providing. Um, and I'm delighted that the programme for government uh, does provide for good quality broadband. And I'd like to hear the minister's uh, views on that uh, when summing up. Um, also, again, um, it's been said to me in many of the rural areas that you know people are just happy that there's defibrillators in their area because God forbid if a home had a call 999 and, and that applies not just in West Rhone but in other rural areas um, of, of, or, uh, of this constituency and others. So again, I'm thankful for the member for bringing this to the floor of the House. This is one issue I think we're, we're, we're not going to let uh, rest and we're going to continue until we do have proper broadband bring and her internet to services in West Tyrone. Gormagat. Iram Sir Barry McEldoff. I call Barry McEldoff. Colonel May, I got a free of yes, can call you. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Um, I suppose where would you start? You know, it's so bad. You know that this really needs to be tackled. Um, it is more about people than it is about technology. At the end of the day, the same as the roads debate last week was more about people than it was about roads. Um, I would suggest, uh, in all seriousness, to the minister that if he wants to go down in history, if he wants to go down in history, leave a great legacy as a minister for the economy, he could do worse than take up the challenge of providing, ensuring the provision of first-class broadband in constituencies like West Tyrone by the end of this mandate, as has been suggested by other speakers. I think the programme for government should reflect that, and I think that. You know, the minister should set himself the ambition, uh, the target of sorting this out uh, in a major comprehensive way in the next four years, in the next four to five years, sooner if possible. So I'm really trying to convey to the minister from the outset that this is a massive, massive priority for rural people, for rural citizens. Uh, his predecessor minister uh, for enterprise, trade and investment, Jonathan Bell, I met with Minister Bell in Netherley House some months ago and brought with me rural council representatives. And uh, in anecdotal fashion, uh, Minister Bell told me that he was familiar with our community. He was once a social worker in the area and that he had stayed in a bed and breakfast in Seskinoor. And he inquired about the family in Seskinoor and I told him that that family in Seskinoor have a great word on them, except when it comes to broadband. Because broadband is dominating the minds and the thoughts of people in West Tyrone to a huge degree. Uh, Tom Buchanan, who sponsored the debate, uh, was right when he emphasised the entrepreneurial side of things in West Tyrone. And in Tyrone, uh, he mentioned the niche area of precision engineering. And I think it's a, it's a well-known statistic that 80% of the world's quarry manufacturing equipment is made in County Tyrone. 80% of the world's quarry manufacturing equipment. Now, I could easily spend uh, a lot of time, or the remaining time, giving the Minister a tour de force of rural areas in West Tyrone. And he might think that I will have done that by the end of this speech, but I don't think I'm doing it because I'm just touching uh, on the surface here. 
If you take areas like Clannabogan, between Oma and Dromore, you have a major uh, tractor uh, selling company there at Corradina Road, J.B. Barrett, significant employer. No or poor broadband all of the time. How can they do business? In the Craigan area, you have a very distinguished uh, building contractor, J&M Begley, and their tale of woe, their recent experience, really needs to be retold here and now. They were eight days without any internet provision between the 17th of May and the 24th of May, trying to run a business which operates solely on the internet. An extremely distressing time for the company as they had the following deadlines to meet. Wages processed on the internet, Thursday weekly to revenue and customs. Subcontractor return posted on the internet by the 19th of the month, every month. VAT was due before the end of the month to revenue and custom. The deadline was fast approaching. Southern VAT due before the 19th of the month. Uh, revenue and customs were contacted. The position was explained to them, and they could not believe that in 2016, internet could be off for eight days. And they were quite adamant, because they're quite ruthless, that we have to pay, or they have to pay, the fines of £100, I think it was, per day. And the Southern Government charge was a €400 Euros penalty. So the company is irate, the company is distressed, and the company is disadvantaged, disadvantaged in meeting crucial deadlines. When I was in the Trillic area uh, during the recent election, and it doesn't take an election to hear these messages, but they certainly get reinforced over a four, five, six week period. I met a farmer in the Canine area of Trillick who couldn't fill out his single farm payment form online at a time when the minister's colleague, uh, Michelle McElfeen, will be pushing farmers towards online completion as did the previous minister, uh, Michelle O'Neill. An electrical engineer, young man from the Derry Allen area of Trillick would love to work one or two days a week from home. The member bring his... Sorry, you have a few more minutes. Can no can problem. You bring him? I'm very grateful for your latitude, uh, Principal Deputy Speaker. An electrical engineer, a young man from the Derry Allen area of Trillick, can't work from home, but would be offered that facility by his Belfast-based employer, should this be got right. Last Saturday... And the when member I, bring his remarks to a close. I've got half a minute or, or just six minutes. Okay, okay, I'll just leave it at that. Uh, we want to end this economic disadvantage, major economic disadvantage. I call Kelly Armstrong. Thank you very much, Deputy Principal Speaker. Um, thank you very much to Mr Buchanan for bringing forward this debate tonight. Um, as a rural dweller, um, having issues with broadband can cause absolute distress, I have to say, in homes of teenagers, um, because it's not a luxury. It's not an indulgence, it is a utility, and believe me, when you've got kids at school or trying to run a rural business, it's not a luxury, it absolutely is a utility. Um, I very much welcome hearing about the OMA hub approach, um, because, and I would like very much to see that replicated across Northern Ireland, because where there is a hub approach, then you can see broadband being spread out into the rural areas around that. I do believe that we should consider how we identify the gaps in rural areas. Uh, Mr Hussey had talked about 99% of um, the UK has broadband provision. I'd like to challenge that actually because as I mentioned in the debate or the discussion earlier on today with the motion, um, while there are some villages that would be claimed that have broadband, when you actually look into the detail of it, the periphery areas that are not close to a green cabinet don't. Um, so when someone says there's 99% coverage, actually, is there, has there been a good enough review in rural areas of those streets, towns, roads um, where the provision isn't very good? I think there does need to be a targeted approach to reach those rural areas where broadband is not yet available or speeds are not of a good enough standard, because this is actually hurting rural businesses. Um, it's making them not competitive. And of those businesses that I have spoken to, it's hurting their sales. It's hurting their marketing strategies. They're not able to brand themselves globally. And as far as online banking is concerned, you may as well forget about that one. Um, a while back when they talked about doing away with checks, how many rural businesses went into panic mode because online banking wasn't available because of the lack of broadband? 
I do believe that rural proofing is a necessity in this issue and that any future proposals must be rural proofed. It is not acceptable for rural people to be expected or to have slower speeds than urban dwellers. I think that it must be therefore a priority for the Minister and for the Department to ensure that rural areas do receive a fair um, coverage of broadband. I would like to see cross-departmental consideration on this issue. As I said earlier, when you're a mother of a teenager, um, when you see the homework that comes home and you're expected to have this done online, printed out, reports completed, the absolute panic that's in your child's eye when they realise that the library shut at half four and there isn't alternative provision available for them, it's not fair. So we need to work with education on that. GPs and hospitals more and more depend on linking through reports. But that's impossible if the broadband speeds are not good enough or indeed broadband is not available. If we want to develop our rural businesses to build entrepreneurship, and I read with some interest the Bring It On campaign where we were pushing to see more and more young people becoming coders, there's not much point with that if the young people when they go home in the evening don't have access to an appropriate broadband to take forward what they've learned during the day. We do need to improve connectivity because as more and more government departments are putting information on NI Direct or moving to apps, that's not a lot of use if you haven't got broadband at home and you can't access it. I'm very concerned about BT, not because of the work that they have been doing rolling out green um, cabinets. I think that actually that has been quite successful in the majority of places. However, when you phone up when a new green cabinet has gone in, they say, sorry, we're not in your area. The mapping system actually is out of date. So I'd be quite keen to challenge BT to say, actually, are you up to date with even who you're in, what your engineers are doing? It's very important that we consider that our rural customers are not getting the best um, provision from BT because they're not up to date with those um, mapping system. Mr McAleer talked about the, bra the draft programme for government framework and in that almost every one of the outcomes will depend on improved internet connectivity. In fact, if we want to achieve many of the outcomes, the indicators say themselves there that we need improved internet activity or connectivity. So I guess in summary, just to say that um, West Tyrone is not the only rural area in Northern Ireland that's being let down. Um, there are quite a significant number of rural areas, pockets across the whole of Northern Ireland, where broadband provision is harming not only our rural businesses, but it's also stagnating and stopping our young people from being able to become involved in the IT industry. Thank you. Call Rosemary Barton. Thank you, Madam Principal Deputy Speaker. Thank you. While indeed I represent Fermanagh and South Tyrone, I have great empathy with my colleagues from West Tyrone and further afield. The issues of broadband and mobile not spots are exactly the same. Yes, some of the villages have benefited, but unfortunately the rural dwellers appear to have been forgotten about or neglected. Is that because in the long term, superfast broadband to these areas would not be economically viable? Further, we have the situation in Fermanagh and South Tyrone where people living within a few hundred, hundred metres of a new green box cannot receive fast broadband, as historically the infrastructure that already exists means that they have been connected to a green box six kilometres in the opposite direction and therefore out of range of the fast broadband. This needs to be looked at. Then we have the situation in Listen Ski where green boxes are located at either end of the town and the centre of the town is outside the range of either of the green boxes because many of the businesses were originally connected to the exchange directly in the town centre, which cannot be upgraded. Surely this indicates that some thoughts need to be given to an upgrading of the already out-of-date historical infrastructure. Yesterday we de debated the proposed closure of the electrical, office, the electrical office and the difficulties of registering online due to limited broadband. Farmers also, who traditionally all live in rural areas, cannot avail of the facility of registering their newborn animals online and thus keeping their registers up to date. Many have to travel some distances to their nearest agricultural office at extra cost to themselves. To do this. Farmers are also encouraged to submit their single farm payments applications online for quicker assessment checks 
by department staff and, of course, quicker payments, which all farmers need these days. Also, we have our cars to tax online, bank online, holidays are booked online, etc. That none of this can be done. Yes. Well, the member agreed that uh, in relation to exactly what she's st stating in relation to applications for farming uh, and car tax, that the difficulty, and as, as I said to uh, uh, fellow member Michaela Boyle, is in getting through to these people. The car tax agency is now in Swansea, it's moved from Coleraine, and again there's a disconnect, and they don't know where West Tyrone is, they don't know where Fermanagh South Tyrone is, uh, and uh, that is a huge issue. Yes. I'm sorry, we won't have time to give you an extra minute. Because okay. the yes, indeed, I, to I totally agree with you. And these people have no idea of the geography of the area. Thank you. When we, we also have another problem in that there seems to be a, getting a greater divide between the broadband available. We have, now in England, we have up to 200 megabytes. In Northern Ireland, in Fermanagh, South Road, we're even looking at trying to get two megabytes. Something needs to be looked at. Over the many years, over many years, questions have been asked in this House about broadband and mobile connectivity, and a substantial amount of money has been allocated for upgrading to, for upgrading to both. However, Madam Principal Deputy Speaker, connectivity and mobile not spots remain not only a major issue, but a very important, a ve but very, very important for the people of the West. Thank you. I call the Minister for the Economy, Simon Hamilton. Thank you, um, Principal Deputy Speaker. I want to congratulate the, the member on securing this debate on, on broadband provision in, in West Tyrone, uh, which developed into broadband debate on broadband provision in several other parts of, of the country as well. I, mean, I think it's the first time I've, I've had an opportunity to say that. I could almost sort of say I refer members to the comments made uh, some hours ago, uh, having debated this at length um, this morning in the chamber. Um, but um, it is an opportunity to, uh, to highlight uh, many important uh, issues which were discussed to re-highlight some of the, the issues that were discussed earlier today through the motion uh, about Northern Ireland's telecommunications network and specifically hone in on, on West Tyrone. Um, again, congratulate the member for, for securing the debate and I'm very happy to, in due course, visit um, Oma and his uh, West Tyrone constituency, particularly the Enterprise Centre, which I'm uh, familiar with already. Um, and indeed, and, uh, some of the other superb businesses uh, within the West Tyrone constituency, and um, where there have been, uh, I don't think anybody who contributed to the debate suggested for a second that West Tyrone was not a hive of, 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 of some very good industries and good, very good businesses, and indeed has potential to be more. I'm very happy to uh, travel down to West Tyrone and visit some of those businesses over the, the coming, uh, coming months. I want to begin by, by stressing that, as Minister for the, the Economy, I fully recognise the importance of access to, to fast, dependable internet connectivity in the world of business, as well as the growing reliance on online access for various educational and, and social needs. Broadband has, has quickly become an essential for, for everyday life. I am, of course, familiar with many of the issues raised during the debate from, from personal experience uh, in my own constituency, particularly with regard to broadband provision in rural areas. Uh, my department is fully committed to working to deliver improvements to our telecoms connectivity as set out in the draft programme for uh, government. Over the last eight years, my department has, has channelled some £64 million into a number of projects which have significantly raised the reach, speed and quality of broadband services uh, across Northern Ireland and had, uh, um, at a time, put us ahead of other UK regions. These initiatives have undoubtedly had a, a positive impact in the West Tyrone constituency. A briefing report produced by the House of Commons Library in January of this year has identified that 60 per cent of premises across West Tyrone can currently access superfast broadband services of at least 30 megabits per second. In addition, it reports that in the constituency, 88 per cent of premises currently have a broadband connection of greater than 2 megabits per second, that 56 per cent of premises have a connection of greater than 10 megabits per second, and that 30 per cent have a connection of greater than 30 megabits per second. Importantly, this suggests to, to me that some 30 per cent of premises that can access a broadband service of 30 megabits per second or greater have not yet taken up a faster service. Anyone wishing uh, to find out if they can access a faster service should visit the OpenReach website where there is an availability checker which can search by phone number or postcode. Uh, the report also shows that the average broadband download speed across the West Tyrone constituency currently stands at almost 21 megabits per second, which I acknowledge, when compared to the Northern Ireland average of 28.3 megabits per second, is, is obviously lower. 
But to set this in the wider context of our investment uh, in improved services across Northern Ireland, my department's Northern Ireland Broadband Improvement Project has already ensured that for the first time some 48,000 premises, which are largely in rural areas, have received access to a broadband service of at least 2 megabits per, per second, and that just over 29,000 premises can now access service of 30, services of 30 megabits per second or better. I, I, I pointed out in the debate earlier that the, this afternoon that that £24 million uh, broadband improvement project has seen up to March of 2016 uh, broadband improvement work at 164 exchanges uh, across Northern Ireland, uh, and many of those are in the Western own constituency. Uh, and before, forgive me if I, I get some of these wrong, but just looking through the list and knowing some of the geography of the area, Carrick Moor, Castle Derg, Beira, um, from Quinn, where Mr. Buchanan is from, uh, Fintona, uh, Gorchin, Newton Stewart, Oma, Sion Mills, and Strabane have all benefited from that investment, from uh, that £24 million in that broadband improvement scheme. So, comments made by Mr. McCross that there is no justification for a lack of investment, if I'm quoting him correctly. Um, there has been investment. Now, I accept that it is not perfect. It is not ideal, it's not where anybody would want it to be, but it is not right to say that there has been no investment. There has been investment. We need to look at ways in which we can improve that investment, uh, target that investment, use different technologies to ensure that those are a little bit further away and harder to reach, uh, can get broadband, better broadband speeds. But there has been some investment, and as a result of that, as the figures have shown, there has been some improvement in accessibility to, to better broadband speeds. It's reported, uh, Principal Deputy Speaker, that at the 31st of March 2016, almost 7,100 premises across West Tyrone could access new broadband services delivered through this project. Well, this presents a, a reasonably good picture overall. I, I recognise that more can always be done to increase the coverage of faster broadband services in places like West Tyrone. That is why my department is currently engaged in ongoing initiatives aimed at further enhancing our broadband infrastructure. For instance, under the Broadband Improvement Contract, BT will reinvest certain revenues made when take-up speeds or take-up exceeds specific thresholds. The final amount will not be known until the autumn when plans can be developed uh, to further improve the coverage of faster broadband connectivity across Northern Ireland. Additionally, my department is currently managing a contract for the delivery of the Superfast rollout programme, which by uh, the end of 2017 will provide access to superfast broadband with speeds of at least 24 megabits per second to a further 39,000 premises, both business and residential, across Northern Ireland, including West Tyrone. Members have already, uh, or may already be aware uh, that Ofcom reports that 42 per cent of rural premises and 2 per cent of urban premises cannot currently achieve speeds of 10 megabits per, per second or better. This is largely due to Northern Ireland's premises having some of the longest line lengths in the UK as a result of population spread. However, Ofcom does add that the deployment of my department's superfast programme will change this landscape rapidly. It's anticipated that by the, the time these projects have been completed, some 87 per cent of premises across Northern Ireland will have access to services of at least 24 megabits per second compared to 82 per cent when the project began. Alternative networks can also uh, offer a viable option for the delivery of broadband services in the most difficult to reach and less densely populated areas. Over recent years, my department has supported projects that have extended fixed wireless and satellite broadband networks across many parts of Northern Ireland, particularly in, in, in West Tyrone. In January uh, of this year, my department launched a scheme which allows consumers with a broadband connection of less than 2 megabits per second to access a subsidy towards the cost of having a satellite broadband service installed from a list of registered providers subject to satisfying some, some eligibility criteria. At this point, I'd also like to, to I think it might be helpful to, to remind members of the constraints uh, within which any intervention taken forward by my department has to operate. Telecommunications matters, uh, as many members will know, are reserved at Westminster, meaning that my department has only limited powers to intervene in what is a fully privatised and independently regulated market. In addition, initiatives have to be designed in a way that meets state aid rules, which require us to be technology agnostic and that any procurement is open and competitive with the overriding aim of ensuring value for money and delivering the maximum benefit for pu public funding. While public funds can and will be invested in the development of telecommunications networks, it is ultimately a business decision for providers to decide on how and if they wish to participate in any scheme. In that context, neither I nor this Assembly can direct or compel uh, a network operator as to where or when they should invest and what technology that can be used. Well, I'm Principal Deputy Speaker, my department is currently reviewing what has been achieved to date and considering what will need to be uh, addressed after the current initiatives have completed. While still at a, a very early stage, 
It is already apparent that if the ambitions of the draft programme for government with regard to improving internet connectivity are to be realised, uh, the cost, no matter what the technology we deploy is, is likely to require further investment. I hope that uh, this run-through of, of what we have been doing and the impact that that has been having is beneficial in presenting to members a record of achievements to date within the Western Own constituency, as well as providing an overview of what is currently ongoing to enhance telecommunication infrastructure across Northern Ireland and a summary of, of, of plan for, plans for intervention going forward at both a, a devolved and a national level. I fully appreciate and understand the concerns and issues raised by members from West Tyrone. There are concerns and issues that could and are raised by people living in my own constituency as well as, as, well as other parts of Northern Ireland. Uh, I want to see us build on the £64 million that has been invested into broadband projects since 2008, which have brought about significant improvements. There is still more to do to improve broadband access, and I am committed is doing my best to achieve better broadband speeds for everyone in Northern Ireland. Thank you. The question is that the Assembly do now adjourn. The Assembly is adjourned. <laughs>